Hi, it's Aaron from the Mind Body Project. Uh, welcome back. Thanks for following, following me, liking, and subscribing to all my stuff. Reading your comments. Thank you very much. Um, just remember, you've got the Turn Depression into Happiness course coming in October the fourth, and um, you've got the Turn Anxiety into Confidence course coming up. Uh, that's November the sixth, and then you've got the One Day NLP New Code Games course, which is on the thirteenth of October. So. What I want to do today, uh, I'm going to continue on with some more questions, uh, answering some of your questions, because um, especially around the area of NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, by the way. So you have some questions on that, and I just want to answer some of those for the next few days. So let's see what questions you have for me on those. Okay, so first question is, is Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP, which I'm going to call for short now, um, scientifically proven? Um, apparently now it is. I have research papers on NLP, um, scientifically proven. Um, there was an issue at the start um, because it was new. It came out in the 70s, NLP, uh, by co-creators Richard Bandler and John Grinder. And how NLP come along? NLP is more of a subjective study of humans. It's done by modeling excellence. So really and truly, see, I'm going to say NLP is not really scientifically proven, but there are people who are, have, there's a research center now for NLP, and they're saying, listen, this stuff's science now. So there is scientific proof there. But let me just explain why I'm saying what I'm saying. Okay, so a lot of the time you see me um, drawing this. Now up here you've got excellence. It's up here. And down here you've got, let's say, dysfunction again. Dysfunction. Right, here you've got average. And then you've got average of the average. Okay, so with NLP, NLP is about this um, study of excellence up here. Yeah, so it's studying people up there. What John Grinder and Richard Bannon went and done was they went and modelled those who were the best in their field. They went and modelled those people. And what they did, because if you think about it this way, if you were grown up in France, what language would you speak? You speak French. If you grew up in a different area of England, say if you um, Cockney, what language would you speak? So it's London. What, what language, what, how, what would your accent be? Your accent would be you'll model what is around you. If you were in, um, up in Newcastle, the Geordies, then your accent would change because you've modeled those, especially if you're a ch young child growing up and everyone else was speaking like that. So humans have the capability to model others very, very well. And in fact, that's what gets us into a load of problems. And that's why if you're around people who are not doing very well, then you're unconsciously going to model their habits, yeah, even if you don't want to. You'll start modeling their behaviors unconsciously. So, but in NLP, so Richard Bandler and John Green went and modeled Virginia Satir, uh, Milton Erickson, Fritz Perls, and a load of other people as well. But they were the best in their field. So what they did was they found the best and went, we're going to model you, and what we're going to do is we're going to model you to the extent so we can perform the same as what you can near enough and get the same sort of results as you're getting yeah by modeling you and what they found was that they could then actually do that because humans can actually model they're very good at learning you're an amazing learner and so what they did after that um they went around and modeled loads of other things so their behaviors became absolutely um, incredible. I mean, if you listen to Richard Bandler, 
his um, behavioural flexibility is incredible now because he's been modelling so many people. Um, but what he's doing is he's going after excellence. When you go after science, what you're going to do is you're going to get average people, yeah, a randomised sample, and you're going to essentially get the, you're going to take a standard deviation. So in other words, you're going to get the average of the average. What you're doing is uh, proving from a null hypothesis. And so in other words, you're going to be down here in terms of results that you're going to get. There's the difference. So that is why with NLP, doing those methods, when I went on my master practitioner course, I actually learned like behaviors. I couldn't believe it. it was all jug I was the model for the juggling. And I wasn't allowed to say anything because I had to model. When you're modeling, you can't speak. You can't tell people what to do. They just have to model your behavior and you have to shut up. Yeah, because if you talk, it gets in the way. Yeah, talking actually makes it harder for you to learn from the person. So I shut up and then they were juggling. Within half an hour, everybody could juggle. Everybody. Couldn't juggle before, but everybody could juggle because they modeled my state. Because I didn't realize I got into a certain state to do it. It's the same with Virginia Satir, it's the same with um, Milton Harris. They got into certain states as they were performing at this excellent level. And that's what excellent performers do. So without the modeling, you would not have learned to do that. And when I learned on my own course, um, so when I learned on my course, I, I realized that um, I had m models of excellent in front of me and I was actually learning things a fraction of the time so what it does is it turns decades into days and I just thought that I got cheated at school because if I learned this at school then it'd be all the stuff that we got taught at school would be so much easier to learn because I didn't realize you have to be in a certain state to learn so for me Science-wise, it's not really the same. There's a massive gap between them. So I don't know how they're saying it's scientifically proven because that means you would put them average, which is basically what I'm saying CBT does or psychology does. Because what they want to do is they want to scientifically prove something. Therefore, you are going to be down here, average of the average. Whereas NLP, you're going for here. And with design human engineering, because there are limitations to NLP, you're going even further. You're now creating new states. You're actually making you better with design human engineering. But I, to answer your question, I'm not, I'm gonna say no, it's not, but I'm saying that's a good thing that it's not. Yeah, because you don't have to have everything scientifically proven. Uh, in some cases, it's better not to be. I mean, you can't scientifically move, prove that you're gonna be alive five seconds from now. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, you are though, hopefully. You can't pr scientifically prove that you love your family. You can't scientifically prove your name's your name. You could show me evidence, but it's not scientific evidence. You can't validate it scientifically. So there are other ways to get the evidence, but to put it through a scientific way is very difficult and challenging. Um, because with NLP, for example, me doing the fast phobia model, I've never done it exactly the same way to, twice. Because what you have to do, um, yes, there's a system and yes, there's steps, but I have to adapt. And this is something that in psychology you don't really do, is you have to change the technique slightly, or um, uh, especially CBT, change the technique for the person that you're dealing with. Now, if you have something scientific, you do not change the technique at all. You read out a script. And in fact, on um, there's a there was a study going around, um, and this got introduced to Richard Bandler, which was saying that I can prove that hypnosis, some people are suggestible and some people are not on their, um, this hypnosis test. And the reason why is because they were playing a tape. Now, if you're playing a tape, human, the problem is, you're not reacting to the human in front of you. That's what hypnosis is. It's like when someone closes their eyes, that's right. 
So you're reacting, and plus the other thing is, I'm in a trance, and I'm getting them into a trance. If you're on a tape, you can't do that. But then it's science, they said it scientifically proves that some people are suggestible and some people are not. So it's, it's a bit of a mess to be honest with you, but like there are some people that are saying it is and some people are saying it isn't. I'm saying it's better if it isn't because then you can move up to here with excellence. Um, so I think some parts are um, anchoring, I think is. Um, I'm not sure what else is to be honest with you, but the way that I look at it, it is not really, um, but some things can be. So that's not a very clear answer, but that's the difference. If it's if it is, then it's got to be down here, average of the average. If it's not, then it's probably going to be up here, and that's it.